This video clip describes the step-by-step -step procedures that are essential to perform when administering any injection in dentistry. By following these basic steps, clinicians will be able to administer safe and atraumatic injections. Prior to administering any injection, the clinician must thoroughly evaluate the patient's medical history, even if the appointments are only a few days apart. Patients may be taking medications they were not taking at their previous appointment. Also assess the patient's treatment plan and any known individual pain control needs. Take and record vital signs at each appointment that local anesthetics are administered. Prepare the patient by discussing any sensations that he or she may expect to experience. This step may be combined with the informed consent discussion, which must be obtained prior to administering any injection. Assure that all local anesthesia armamentarium is assembled and properly functioning. After loading the appropriate local anesthetic agent, check to make certain the harpoon is engaged, the cartridge is visible, and the bevel of the needle is oriented correctly. Next, position the patient and yourself. With the patient in the supine position and mouth wide open, the operator should have adequate access and visibility. The patient's head should be adjusted so that it is comfortable for the operator during this procedure. If the operator is comfortable, the chances of administering a painless injection are increased. An uncomfortable operator is more likely to hurry through the procedure, making it more unpleasant for the patient and contributing to increased patient fear. Locate and palpate landmarks. Because of individual anatomic variation, it is critical for clinicians to palpate the appropriate landmarks prior to inserting the needle for any injection. Adjustments in technique are made according to size and shape of skull, location of foramen, and height of vestibule. Dry injection site with a sterile gauze square and apply topical for no less than one minute. By drying the injection site, the effectiveness of topical anesthetic is increased and the improved visibility makes it easier to orient the bevel of the needle. Remember that topical anesthetics also have maximum safe dosages. Therefore, apply only a small amount for the appropriate length of time. Do not rub the tissues with the applicator, but rather place the applicator on the insertion site. Keep the area dry. This preparation time can also be used to rehearse the injection by mentally reviewing the particular injection technique for the area being anesthetized. Obtain good retraction and keep the tissue taut. The use of a sterile 2x2 gauze helps to keep the lip from slipping away during retraction and to hold the tissue tense or taut, thereby allowing the needle to slide through the tissue easily, which contributes to an atraumatic injection. Orient the syringe by assuring that the bevel of the needle will face the bone and the large window of the syringe will face the operator. The large window of the syringe should always be turned toward the operator during an injection to allow the operator to easily observe the speed at which the solution is being deposited and whether the aspiration is positive or negative. Many clinicians believe the bevel of the needle should be facing the bone prior to needle penetration so that the anesthetic solution automatically flows toward the nerve and to increase patient comfort. Always attempt to keep the syringe out of the view of the patient. It's much easier to keep the syringe out of the view by placing the tray setup behind the patient's head. For clinicians with across-the-chest delivery systems, it might be necessary to use a mobile cart to achieve this arrangement. 
Attempt to cover the patient's eyes with your non-dominant hand when bringing the syringe close to the patient's mouth. Under no circumstances should the syringe be brought directly across the patient's eyes. Attempt to fulcrum. The clinician should always attempt to obtain a stable fulcrum. There are several fulcrum positions that can be employed to assure stability during the injection. Keeping the elbow down and as close as possible to the body offers more stabilization than an arm that is elevated and in a still frame position for the entire minute it takes to deposit a cartridge. Keep the palm and wrist facing up. For better control of the syringe during aspiration and deposition, the pad of the thumb should be placed on the thumb ring and the ring should not slide below the knuckle. With the syringe securely placed in the hand, the palm and wrist should be facing upwards toward the ceiling. Again, this allows the operator better control and comfort throughout the injection. Another method to increase stability, particularly in the anterior region where clinicians tend to have less stability because there are no surrounding tissues to help support the syringe, is shown here. The thumb of the non-dominant, the retraction hand, is placed against the barrel of the syringe or a finger of the dominant hand to create a bridge of stability. A finger of the dominant hand can also be placed on the patient's chin along with the palm up grasp position to provide stability. Penetrate the mucosal tissue with the needle one to two millimeters or just until the bevel of the needle is embedded in tissue. Some clinicians feel it is more comfortable for the patient if you drop a few drops of solution and wait a few seconds to anesthetize the area of insertion prior to proceeding. Next, advance the needle slowly. This step is critical for administering atraumatic injections. The clinician that advances the needle very quickly is guaranteed to cause discomfort for the patient. Depositing a drop or two of solution in advance of the needle to anesthetize the area on the way to the deposition site is an acceptable procedure for increasing patient comfort, but the operator must be careful to use only a slight amount of anesthetic because the bulk of the solution must be reserved for the nerves to be anesthetized. Aspirate at the deposition site before depositing solution by pulling back gently on the thumb ring. If the aspiration is positive, blood will enter the cartridge. Even a slight hand movement will relocate the needle tip, resulting in the need to re-aspirate. Relocation of the tip of the needle increases the chance of depositing in a vessel and creating a toxic reaction. If the aspiration is negative, begin to slowly deposit solution. In deeper injections and highly vascular areas, such as the posterior superior alveolar or the inferior alveolar, more than one aspiration should be performed. Aspirating on two different planes is recommended by many clinicians to assure that the lumen is not blocked, preventing an effective aspiration. If the depth of the needle changes at all during the injection, be sure to re-aspirate. If aspiration is positive, assess the amount of blood that has entered the cartridge. If there is just a small trickle, re-aspirate and if negative the second time, continue with depositing. If cartridge is clouded with blood and therefore you are unable to ascertain whether or not the second aspiration is negative, the clinician must change the cartridge and either replace the needle or expel a bit of solution to clear any hemorrhage in the lumen, then re-inject. Explain the situation to the patient in a calm, composed manner. Slow deposition of the solution is another critical step for administering atraumatic injections. To increase patient comfort and decrease the chance of toxicity, the anesthetic should be deposited no faster than one minute per cartridge. Procedures with longer durations will require more anesthetic. Some patients will require greater volumes even for relatively short procedures. Volumes recommended in the individual technique videos are minimal amounts to achieve pulpal anesthesia. Remember that the anesthetic cannot be deposited any faster than one minute per carpule. 
Here is an example of an appropriate deposition rate. In this demonstration, the anesthetic is being deposited much too quickly, which will compromise patient comfort and increase the risk of toxicity. The clinician must remember to communicate with the patient throughout the entire procedure. Besides maintaining supportive verbal communication, it is important to observe the patient's face and body for signs of discomfort during the procedure. Speak to the patient in a positive, reassuring manner, remembering that the patient cannot answer questions. Do not leave the patient unattended after administering local anesthesia. If an adverse reaction occurs, it will usually happen within several minutes after the injection is administered. Finally, withdraw the needle slowly from the tissue and make the needle safe using an accepted recapping technique. A variety of commercial needle guards are available for healthcare professionals. Needles must not be recapped without using one of the many protective barrier devices. It is permissible to use a one-handed scoop technique to replace the needle sheath. Rinse the mouth. Sometimes a drop or two of anesthetic will inadvertently drop into the patient's mouth, leaving a very bitter taste. For patient comfort, be sure to rinse the mouth immediately after making the needle safe. Then assess the patient's comfort with the procedure. The needle is then carefully discarded in a clearly identified, puncture-resistant and leak-proof sharps container according to the standard operating procedures of your facility. Make an appropriate chart entry to document injection specifics and indicate whether or not complications occurred.